There are so many ways to be creative with color in Illustrator, including applying gradients to your artwork. A gradient is a blend between two or more colors, like you see in this shape. Using the artwork in this icon, you'll learn how to apply an existing gradient to artwork, then you'll learn how to edit that gradient to suit your design needs. If you want to follow along, I suggest you open this document from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. To see all the content in the file, choose View, Fit All in Window. With the selection tool selected, click in this background shape to select it. To fill this shape with a gradient color, click the Fill Color in the Properties panel on the right, and ensure that swatches are chosen so you can see the default color swatches you can use. Illustrator documents come with a series of default saved gradient swatches. Click the gradient swatches you see one at a time to see how they affect the fill of the shape. There are a lot of creative uses for gradients, including adding interest to artwork or adding dimension or depth as well. And in Illustrator, gradients can be applied to the fill or stroke of most objects. Make sure you finish by applying the gradient called white black. Once you apply a gradient, you can edit the colors as well as how it appears in the selected artwork. Click the Gradient Options button at the bottom of this panel to open the gradient panel. If you need to, you can drag the gradient panel by the title bar at the top. In the gradient panel that opens, there are a lot of options for editing a gradient, but you'll simply focus on editing the colors in this gradient. Since you applied the gradient to the fill of this shape, you need to make sure you're working on the fill in the gradient panel and not the stroke. Click the fill box so it's on top if it isn't already. Whichever is on top, the fill or the stroke, is what you'll change for the selected artwork. This color bar represents the colors of the gradient in the artwork. These two little, what look like buckets of color, are called color stops and represent the colors in the gradient. You'll see white and black. Drag this white color stop to the right and watch what happens to the artwork when you release it. Dragging it closer to the second color means the transition from white to black, in this case, is much shorter. Go ahead and drag that white color stop back to the left end. If you want to change the colors in a gradient, you can edit each color separately. Double click the white color stop to edit it. So that you can see the color swatches that come with the document, click the swatches button. Then select the color named Cream. To change the other color in the gradient, click in the gradient panel to hide the swatches, then double click the black color stop. Select the color swatch named Blue. With the color set, you can now edit the gradient within the shape using the gradient tool. Click the X at the top of the gradient panel so you can close it. Select the gradient tool in the tools panel on the left and you should see a bar appear across the fill of the shape. This shows the direction and length of the gradient fill. If you move the pointer over it, you can see the two colors on either end. Next, you'll change the direction and length of the gradient. Starting toward the bottom of the shape, click and drag up to almost the top, and then release the mouse button. You just changed the direction of the gradient and you also set the length of the gradient. In other words, how long it takes to blend from the cream color to the blue color. So that you can see all the artwork, select the selection tool in the tools panel on the left and click in a blank area to deselect. As you can see, learning how to create and apply gradients really opens doors to new types of creativity. As you begin to explore in Illustrator and work on your own projects, you should now be able to use gradients to do things like add depth to a button or create the perfect setting sun for a poster, for instance. Save a copy of the file by choosing File, Save As, and make sure you change the name so you won't overwrite the original practice file.